Remnant from the Ashes is like Destiny. It's like The Vision. It's Dark Souls with guns. It's Warframe and Bloodborne combined. It's Diablo with guns. Darksiders with guns. And the beat goes on. Much has been said about what Remnant is inspired by on its lead up to release. Comparisons were fast and frequent, and every time I wanted to learn more about this game, all I heard was how many other games it was like, rather than what it actually is. So what actually is Remnant from the Ashes? Remnant is a third-person action-adventure RPG set in a world suffering from a presence known as the Rot. As soon as you boot up the game, it's time to create your character, and after a brief tutorial, you will find yourself in Ward 13, an underground bunker with a handful of folks trying their best to survive. Since they do you a solid and brought you in, you agree to help look for their leader. The premise is very simple. What comes next is an arduous journey into a world left to decay and wither away as you must battle against the rot, rival bandits, and much, much more. The plot, while simple, slowly revealed itself via extensive journals, log entries, and an odd assortment of very unique and downright strange NPCs that reside in this world. To say anything else would be taking away from some of the great twists that Gunfire Games has in store for its players. The game's world, locations, and enemy variety may at first seem limited. The first handful of hours really take time to unravel, but just when you think you have an idea what to expect, all of those assumptions go flying out the window. That's true for every aspect of Remnant. Yes, I'd be an absolute fool to pretend it doesn't have its influences. Most of these influences do stem from Dark Souls. Things such as an Estus Flask, bonfires, and a much more brutal difficulty curve. I won't deny any of these facts. I could sit and write a 40 page essay on what it is to consider copying Dark Souls, or what is considered to be inspired by this genre that Dark Souls has created. So many games share in these design aspects. For this fall, I will be reviewing a Star Wars title for goodness sake that shares many of these same concepts. The reason for this mini rant is simple. While Remnant does share in some of these influences, it's decidedly not Dark Souls. It's clear and concise with its storytelling. It has a much larger focus on ranged weapons and long distance combat. Where other games in this genre are slow and deliberate, Remnant is quick, responsive, and requires making fast decisions to survive in open combat. The co-op is simple and extremely easy to hop into, but playing the game solo is just as viable an experience. It's also not a looter shooter by any means. Every single weapon, accessory, and piece of armor is hand placed in the world. You won't be sifting through an inventory of 20 blue shotguns to grab that purple one that fires off your dopamine receptors. Instead of a large branching skill tree, Remnant features a very unique trait system. The thing that makes it so different is how you go about acquiring said traits. You have some traits depending on your starting archetype, some you may get from exploring, some you may get because you died a lot and were revived, and you might get some because you were the one doing the reviving. As soon as you play co-op, you get another trait focused on teamwork. As you gain XP, you get one trait point to apply to a myriad of skills and buffs you will gather through the game's 15 to 20 hour runtime. Another major aspect that sets Remnant apart is how they create their campaigns. Each time you begin a campaign on a new difficulty, you must begin the game over again. The world gets reset, but all of your gear, power, and skills stay with you. This is because each time you perform this action, the game randomly generates the entire campaign. Level layouts, enemy placement, and even bosses and encounters are constructed anew. Now normally, randomly generated game design can have its own assortment of issues. Generic environments, a lack of story, and poor encounter design can sometimes be the result of this style. This is probably Remnant's best feature. Even on a full campaign run, it will be impossible for you to experience the entire game. However, despite that level of RNG, they were smart in this process. Every campaign has guaranteed set pieces. Certain NPCs, weapons, armor, and major story moments will always occur in every game. This allows for a unique take on the standard New Game Plus formula, while also providing a real incentive to play co-op and visit other players' campaigns. I play the opening hours three different times, and each time I have encountered new weapons, armor sets, and every single first boss fight has been against a completely unique enemy and in a brand new location. Now it's by no means an infinite number of possibilities, but it does provide a great incentive to explore, play with others, and reboot the world in order to see what's really out there. 
all of these elements comprise Remnant's standout trait, and that trait is the game design itself. Every single design element feels good to interact with, and each decision Gunfire Games has made clearly builds on the one before it. Remnant's overall game direction is the trick. It's the rare thing to see. That's what this game represents to me. Not Dark Souls, not Destiny, or any other game. It represents a sharp, precise, and very tightly designed gameplay experience that bleeds into every aspect of its design. The lore building, co-op, gunplay, and RPG aspects all make sense and fit together perfectly. Remnant from the Ashes is a fantastic experience. The unique world that Gunfire Games created really spoke to me, and the gameplay was such a refreshing change of pace from the usual assortment of big budget AAA titles. So whatever you do, just give Remnant a shot and try it for yourself. What you will find is a fantastic, tactical action RPG with the story and a world as fun to experience with it as its combat and game design are to play with. I give Remnant from the Ashes a 9.3. It is the surprise sleeper game of the year. I went in with almost no knowledge or expectations, and I cannot stop playing this game. It's so much fun. My friends are into it. I've played it by myself an extensive amount of time, and everyone just seems excited about what this game represents. I hope all of you enjoyed the review, and if you like, you can check out the entire written review over at rectifygaming.com. I am Namtox. Thank you all so much. I have hit 1,500 subscribers, and I could not do it without all of you who read and listen to my reviews. I appreciate you all. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time.